Well, God bless you, church. <clears throat> Certainly want to greet you this morning in the name of the Lord. <clears throat> Amen. Praise his wonderful name. Well, truly, church, um, it's good to be here this morning. Everybody feeling fine? <clears throat> I asked Brother Stephan to uh, sing, we'll talk it over in the by and by, and uh, for a specific reason. And that being that I felt that I wanted to say a few words and on Brother Ben's behalf, his passing, and so that's why I, I wanted to, if I was well and could have had it done, uh, I would have had a, a, a special a memorial service Tuesday night on his behalf. Because Brother Ben was a special person, and uh, 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 one that you don't see pass through here all the time. And so, therefore, before I would say anything else, so I like these few words. I don't know, maybe five minutes. I, it all depends on my throat, my voice, because I do have to introduce the tape also. But I have to say something. Uh, Psalms 116.15, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. In other words, the death of his saints, the passing of his saints, the coming home of his saints to him, is very important to him, and it's no light matter. It's no small matter. And the saints, of course, are his loving children, his loving ones. And God does not esteem, does not lightly esteem, the death of his children. Uh, now, what can we say about Brother Ben? Truly, there was only one Brother Ben. His life, his spirit, his talents, his ways, just himself, uh, he was a revelation. Of all the years I've known him, around 41 to 42 years, I never really seen Brother Ben get mad or blow up or anything, but he accepted uh, the way things were, or his life, the way things were around him. He didn't complain about it. He just went right on. And you ask him a question, he said, I feel like a million. And so... <clears throat> I met Brother Ben around January, February, 1962. And he was a mailman like me. Over, we, we worked in the uh, Washington Bridge uh, Post Office on 80th Street between Audubon and St. Nicholas. And I had a, a, a postal post route, and he, was a, and a, he was a letter carrier. And one day, uh, as you know, some of the uh, uh, people that, that have been in down through the years, because they knew that when I worked in that mail truck, the uh, George Washington Bridge under it, that was my office. That was my office there, under the George Washington Bridge. Anybody come through there with fair game to hear a sermon? Amen. It was fair game to hear a sermon from me if they passed by my mail truck. <clears throat> Pardon me. I have to clear my throat because of the of the uh, operation. I thank God it didn't sever my uh, vocal cords, but it is a little rough on, my, on the left side. <clears throat> so anyway, Brother Ben come by this uh, fateful day, and there I was anointed in my mail truck looking for somebody to preach to. And poor Brother Ben come up with his mail bag and all, and there he was, fair game. I said, come over here. And so, therefore, I said, what's your name, brother? And he told me, Ben Smith. I says, uh, are you saved, man? And so, he told me he was a Baptist. I said, a Baptist? I asked you, were you saved? <laughs> I didn't ask you if you were a denomination. So anyway, it went like that, and I preached the word of God to him straight away. And he straight away received it. So therefore, he was the first, the only one that I know that I came upon and, and looked right at him and spoke the word of God to him. 
and that word seed answer back. So that's Brother Ben. He was the only one that I know received the pure word with the promise of the Holy Spirit to follow him. So Brother Ben was a genuine word seed. And his life as a Christian, 1962 to 2003, it's around 41 years or so. It's kind of strange knowing that Brother Ben was a word seed and, <clears throat> excuse me, from 1933 to 1962 was Malachi 4's 30th year. 1962 was from 1933. And 1974 to 2003 was my 30th year. So Brother Ben leaves the scene as a word seed with a promise to rise again in the resurrection. 41 years or so. So to me, he was like a sign out there, a, a seed of God, uh, taking the word of God and living the word without the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Just living the word. And he proved that it could be done he had his trials, tribulations, ups and downs like all of us have all the time. But it was his disposition that, was, that uh, uh, set him above his peers and his brothers and sisters because he was always the same. And, uh, and in this time of the year, October 3rd, I believe, he, the Lord took him home. Well, this is the fall of the year. And this is a, a beautiful time of the year, uh, those of us that have the four seasons. And just as the fall of the year with the, the uh, tree leaves uh, dying with a promise to come up in the spring. And here, Brother Ben drops in that time in October with the tree leaves dying and all the different beautiful colors of the leaves. And that's, it, to me, it shows that that's precious to God. All the beautiful colors, and that's the death of his leaves, and like it, the death of his children. And it depicts the beauty in death for the Christian. There's beauty in death for the Christian. Like we've heard Brother Ram tell us about um, because Daddy Bosworth, when he was going home, and everybody was standing around sad, singing, <clears throat> excuse me, and he said, what are you sad about? And he began to sing, and then he said, the angels are coming for me now. Just like that. And just like my dad, when he was uh, getting ready to leave here, he told Brother Hunt, he says, I see the angels coming down here. So friend is, friends, it's not a time to be sorrowful. I mean, there's a time to mourn, of course, in our, you know, in our bereavement and so forth. But really, for the real Christians, is a time of joy. It's a time that the saint, a fallen uh, soldier, is going home to God. He fought a good fight. He kept the faith. And now he's going home. And so, to God, that's the way Brother Ben was to God. God took him at this time because uh, to depict the leaves and so forth, the tree, the things that is dying, and to God is very precious. So Brother Ben was so many uh, things to so many people. And uh, to me, uh, it was very strange, Joseph, and his name is Benjamin. And so it was a spiritual connection also. He was my brother. He was my friend. He was very special to me. And he was totally loyal to this ministry. And I was fortunate to have, like in the New Testament, like you had the different uh, uh, brethren that traveled with the ministry, like Mark and uh, Barnabas and so forth. Well, that's what Brother Ben was to me. And he was totally loyal to all people. He was loved by all inside and outside. And many of the people who have families here in our church, they're uh, mothers and fathers and relatives love Brother Ben. And <clears throat> all the ministers and different ones recognized Brother Ben. They knew it was something special because the way he was with me and the, with the people of God. So Brother 
Perry Green told me that he wanted a Brother Ben also. I said, well, you're not going to get one because there's only one. Amen. He belongs to me. So, and also, he was like, how to say it, a man's singer. If you know what I mean, a lot of these ministers are rough. And they don't like a lot of singing and going on. They just want to come in the pulpit and preach. But Lee Vale told me that Brother Ben was a tremendous singer, and he could sing for him anytime. That's right. So Brother Lee Vale said you could sing. I'm telling you, friends, then, then you were something. You, you were somebody. <clears throat> His loyalty and honesty was what amazed everybody. He was a precious brother to one and all. Husband, father, whatever. He had great talents. Tremendous basketball player. Of course, to the young brethren here, he was in a different time. He wasn't in your time. Because when he played, the forward used to bring the ball up, and they were called on to be short and fast. And that's why you saw Brother Ben. He was one of the fastest forwards around and over the Hackensack Championship for high school team. If you saw in the lobby there, there was a picture there with him and some high school friends. Well, that was his high school team. And they, I think, they, they went all the way in, in, in New Jersey. But he was, as Brother Hunt brought out, he was a, he was a set shot artist, as we say. And in those years, he had the center and the guards. They were taller. And they were, cause they were there to guard the basket. And the forward would bring the ball up the court. Now it's reversed. But anyway, that's the way it was then. So you can understand how Brother Ben being a forward, his size, his quickness, his reflexes, well, he was a tremendous basketball player. And so he was a gentleman to all our sisters. <clears throat> he was a Christian, a precious Christian brother to all our brothers. He lived in my home as part of my family when I was uh, resigning at 1267 Finley Avenue. And to say that he will be missed does not tell the whole story. It's only part of the story that he will be missed. Now, I'm just skipping along quickly to say something in behalf of my friend. I wish I was well enough to have had a memorial for Brother Ben Tuesday. And uh, I feel uh, like uh, uh, the Brother Ben's uh, famous words, I feel like a million. But did you ever examine that? And understood, try to understand what does he mean? It's because he was one in a million. That's why he felt like a million. He was the one in the million. <clears throat> so you make sure that you're one in a million also. <clears throat> and so, so anyway, we'll certainly talk it over in the by and by. As, as the song, as Stephen sang the song. We'll talk it over in the by and by. We'll talk it over, my Lord and I. I'll ask the questions. I'll, I'll, I'll ask the reasons. And he'll tell me why when we talk it over in the by and by. So, friends, <clears throat> I say may God rest Brother Ben's soul in peace. And I remember when, in uh, 1964, uh, I went to... Uh, because Brother Perry Green, we had given Brother Branham some drapes for his home and uh, out in Arizona. And Brother Perry told me to um, be at the Holiday Inn restaurant at 10 minutes to 9. So I don't question people. If they tell me to do something, I, I'm going to do what they say. They must have a reason. I have enough understanding to, to realize that because they have a, a reason for saying what they're saying. And so I was there. <clears throat> I walked in the, in the lobby, looked into the restaurant, and there sat Brother Branham with his back to me and, and Perry Green facing me. Then I quickly discerned uh, that Perry Green wanted to share the last 10 minutes of his two-hour interview from 7 to 9 with me. And so when, so then, because Brother Branham got up abruptly at 10 minutes to 9, that's where he was, very abrupt. He got up very prompt on time. And they walked out of the lobby. I'm standing there, and Brother Perry said, Brother Branham, <clears throat> he says, uh, 
Um, this is uh, Brother Coleman from the New York Assembly, and his church gave you the drapes. So Brother Branham quickly reached into his pocket to pull out his uh, wallet, I mean his checkbook, and he went to write a check. And he said, oh, uh, thank you, Brother Coleman. I said, no, no, Brother Branham, I grabbed his hand. <laughs> I almost squeezed it off, you know. And he says, no, no, no. I said, don't, please don't pay us back. That is our blessing. And he said, well, Brother Coleman, Jesus said, whatsoever you have done to the least of mine, you have done it unto me. And with that, I almost <laughs> was finished there. Yeah. And so, therefore, I say, uh, what Brother Ben has done unto the least of us, Jesus was telling him, you have done it unto me. As he's over on the other side there. <clears throat> so we are praying for you, Sister Catherine and Sister Carrie and the family. And I know you're in your time of mourning. So may God take you through your time of mourning and undergird you with his power and his love. And we will certainly be praying for you. Now the most important question ever asked, Job 14, 14, if a man die, shall he live again? <clears throat> well, if we in the world, uh, just normal, natural people, we can say it is possible, some people would say, a man, they would reason, man has a beginning, or has always been. Number two, if he had one beginning, he can have another. Three, if he has always been, it is possible for him to always be. So that's what some people would reason that out, talk about it, have debates about it, whatever. Then number two, it is probable. The most important questions in life are decided by probabilities. Salvation, marriage, business, and all the things of life. So universal reason demands it. Universal faith demands it. Universal desire demands it. Universal justice, justice demands it. Universal affection demands it. And this is a universal, <clears throat> this is the universal hope for the things in this life without an absolute. To the elected predestinated seeds that was in Elohim, Elohim's thinking, then spoke as a word seed into the Logos by Elohim into the Lamb's Book of Life. Uh, then you come here and you pass, you bypass your theophany up there, you come here to the earth, God sends you here, gives you parents to bring you into this life, and then you grow up. And you come here as a special agent from God. And you come here for one purpose, to prove that you come from God, and you're going back to God. And you come to this proven ground, and you're only passing through. You're like Abraham, you're seeking a city that has a foundation, whose builder and maker is God. And you're here to prove that you're not like Eve, uh, but that you would uh, stand as a word seed against Satan. So there's our brother Ben standing as a word seed for 41 years with this message. Without the spirit, but proven by the word that he was a, a, a word Christian in New York City to all people. <clears throat> so the question, if a man die, shall he live again? Uh, number one, is not possible by the first thing I said, it is possible. Two, it's not, it is probable. It's not that either, but rather being a germ seed attribute of God from the beginning. Job 14, 14 question, the bride can say as an answer to this question, it is certain because Christ has descended into the grave and like Samson of old and tore apart the pillars of death and triumphantly proclaim that I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live, and he that liveth 
and believeth shall never die. Life is a gift of God. Life is a target of sin. Once we enter into this word life, we become a target of sin. Every gun is training on you, and that's what Brother Ben went through. Every gun, just like you have to go through, but Brother Ben was faithful to the call, and the Holy Spirit took him home in the fall of the year because his colors were changing like the leaves, and it was uh, uh, precious in God's sight. So life is also the object of redemption, and life is the prelude to eternity where Brother Ben is now. So God has wiped away all of Brother Ben's tears from his eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Brother Ben, may your soul rest in peace, and we'll talk it over in the by and by very soon. Brother Bren pressed on and lived out his word life. I say to New York, Pennsylvania, you have a commission from God to make a church that will make a seven thunder revival. I pray to God that you will do what Brother Ben did. May the Lord richly bless you. Well, thank the Lord, church. Okay. All right, um, church, uh, I'd like for you to stand for the reading of the word. Revelation 3 and Revelation 8, 1. Revelation 3, 14, and <clears throat> verse 14. And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans, the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in a fire, that thou mayest be rich and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and be and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Revelation 8, 1, And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of a half an hour. May God have blessed the reading of his word, just a short word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, Lord, and for thy people. And I feel that this is going to be a great day, Lord. I feel that this is going to be a day that the people won't soon forget. For this will be a day then where many in here, I believe, will receive a genuine revelation of the third phase and the third pull and a revelation of the seven thunders and the hidden mysteries and all of these great promises, Lord. So, Father, may you touch your tired servant, and may I, uh, I'm laboring to get this over to the people to connect with Brother Tim Smith. Almighty God, bless the reading of the word, the hearing of it, and bless the words that I would try to say uh, before we put on the video. Father, we pray and ask the blessings in Jesus' name and his sake. Amen. And amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> well, church, um, uh, today's video, Brother Tim Smith, last Sunday night, 
October 5th, as you know, we were supposed to have the ISD in connection, and we had some, uh, we had some equipment that was uh, lent to us because our, our, our equipment had to, be, uh, uh, had to be taken care of, and this equipment, somehow, it, because uh, it, 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 it didn't work, and it, uh, so we couldn't use it the last Sunday night. But therefore, New York, uh, you didn't uh, have the opportunity to, to hear Brother Tim Smith. But I have, I've heard the tape. I heard it, I saw it Tuesday. And uh, what, uh, well, the name of the tape is Anointed and Commissioned by the Hidden Mysteries of the Third Phase. So what a total masterpiece. It is nothing but the seven thunders uttering their voices to that group. I, so therefore, New York, and also Pennsylvania for your second blessing. New York, you're in for a mighty blessing today with this tape. So now, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, what I want to do is that, uh, well, let me put it this way. Church, I had a real burden for you because... When the Lord, because when the Lord told me to replay these tapes back in August, and I spoke to him, I knew I had get ready to go in the hospital, and um, I felt like, well, Lord, you, you revealed the thunders way back, almost 30 years ago, and I preached all those years. It seemed like it wasn't accepted, but by a few people, and hey, I'm getting ready to go in the hospital soon. I don't know, what, will this ever be accepted? Will it ever be understood? And the Holy Spirit told me it was not to be understood before because it was way out of season. But this is the season now for it to be understood. So then I was able to go to the hospital with uh, peace in my heart, knowing that so many precious brothers and sisters in the message of Malachi 4, and they don't have an understanding of what the seven thunders are. And that's Brother Brown's message. And, that, and I see them, and of course, there's a lot to say that, uh, you know, what I'm preaching is foolishness or whatever, but, but they never even heard what, I, you know, what I'm preaching. So I know that, so I don't say anything about that because I wouldn't hit a blind man. They're just blind. I just pray for them. So I know what I'm doing. <clears throat> so I felt that my church here in New York and PA, they're not getting it. As I watched you th through the playing of those nine tapes. So I said, like I told you, so then I, I, I went on the, the uh, telephone hookup, on the last telephone hookup. I came on the telephone hookup. I wasn't in shape to do that, but I saw you were missing the church. You got a beautiful new church, and uh, God did not spend all that money uh, to have nobody here on a Wednesday night. I can take that right now. There will be somebody here in a revival on Wednesday night. So not the ones that, that are coming now be somebody else. Because <clears throat> there will be a seventh on revival. And a revival is not for Sunday only. It's for the, all the time. Not just su uh, Sunday morning. For Wednesday night, Friday night, Monday night, any night. Amen. So, I told you on the last telephone hookup that anointed and commissioned Beaumont, Texas, night, uh, uh, July 2nd, 1976, that the revelation on there, the hidden mysteries, was the great revelation of the seven thunders being revealed. Then I told you on... Uh, Rivers of Living Water, which was preached on July 4th, 1976 in Beaumont, was the ripening of our understanding of the scriptures. And after you have understanding of the scriptures, and David Thompson, you heard his message and what the Lord told him, and he's a sign of ripened understanding. That if you have understanding, then you enter into a 10-day uh, 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 period of time as it was, not just 10 days, you know, for now, but it's like a 10-day period 
where you are absolutely have an understanding and you have a revelation of the seven thunders and you're praising God, you're, you're blessing his name, how long? Continually. Wednesday night also. So then I slipped in here, I think, last week to encourage you and tell you how much God loves you. Because when I saw how discouraging it was to the ministry uh, for the people not to even show up here and all the money that was spent, and, and then for two years they don't have a Wednesday service and they're crying about Wednesday, then when the time comes, they don't come Wednesday. So to show you, when I kind of rebuked you last week, about a hundred more people showed up last Wednesday. So church, something's definitely wrong somewhere. Now I'm not talking to people that cannot come here on Wednesday. I'm talking to the people that can come here on Wednesday and won't come here on Wednesday. I'm just like I was talking to the people uh, that could come before 10 a.m. and worship, but would not do it for years. Now we have the same problem on Wednesday. We had that problem. Now we have this problem. So there's something is wrong somewhere. You need a revelation, church. So anyway, I said that was the ripening of our understanding. I said now the rest of these 10 tapes will be the teaching to inspire you to go to the angel and ask for the book. That's what's wrong in not going to the angel. To make a revival on Sunday and Wednesday night in your homes, your jobs, your life, every day. It's not Sunday morning. Friends, understand this. Sunday morning is for church members. Brother Bram said on Ephesians church age that every age produced twins, foolish and wise. And the, cause the reveal word age, uh, which is the uh, seven rainbow colors up there, and that, that's the reveal age, that will produce twins also in the message. I hope I'm not pinching you, but that is sure will. So therefore, and that's why you to go to the angel with a revelation of the thunders, and all those without that revelation, well, they'll just be church members. They'll just come in there with some form or fashion or whatever and believe in some strange idea or interpretation or whatever. But there will be a bride. Amen. So somehow, these nine messages uh, kind of fell to the ground in just 50 days. Do you realize that <clears throat> from August 24, the first Sunday tape, to the day is the 12th, is 50 days? Seems like to me, <laughs> should be a, a, a something going on in here. My God, are people shouting and praising God? People being healed, people being sealed, refilled. But thanks be to God, he had a ram in the bush, Brother Tim Smith, a gifted young man, to come back last Sunday night, October 5th, 2003, with this great mighty message. One, uh, Brother Tim, take now to bring it back to you, New York, what I told you on the telephone, I come in here like that in that condition to tell you that, uh, you, okay, uh, to tell you that uh, what I told you that um, anointing commission was the revelation of the seven thunders, being the hidden mysteries. Then I told you again. So, okay, I said, I know it's right. So the Holy Spirit has Brother Tim come and take the same message, which you will see today in New York, and hold the book up and say, I got my inspiration from here. And then he proceeds, and then David Thompson, through there, watched and something struck his heart, and he literally leaped up in the air and in front of the church and ran across. Now watch what that did. That anointed Brother Tim, you'll see right on the video. And that's, there was Brother David, uh, revelation feeding back Brother Tim, and he's anointed now, and now God and the angel, the, uh, the angel messenger will speak right through him, and you'll see it happen right, right in front of you. 
That's why it means don't you come to church, don't sit there like you're dead. I mean, you're on a fire. You're alive. Lively stones. Sit there with an understanding. Amen. So, <clears throat> so Brother Tim takes his inspiration from Anointing Commission Beaumont. He holds the book up and proceeds to tell you exactly what I told you on the telephone hookup on that Sunday. It thundered on that Beaumont tape, and God sent Brother Tim back in here to prove it to you. So New York, and the second time for Pennsylvania, this is the day where this is going to be nailed down. It has already thundered. And God held that back from Beaumont all these years. And what the, 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 the most blessed part to me is that I'm so happy when this goes out and God begins to show other people what it is. It has nothing to do with me. Because my revelation was back in 74 that the seven thunders are the seven voices, seven church ages. And that's a prophecy. Because if you understand the prophecy of it, seven thunders are the seven voices of the seven church ages, which are seven manifestations of the one Holy Spirit into the church as faith, a live voice, virtue, a live voice, etc., etc. Et that is the prophecy. And as soon as the Holy Spirit falls, begins to baptize the people, and you, and you are way up here in Revelation, at the finishing of the seventh seal, you will begin by experience to manifest faith, virtue, knowledge, temperance, the virtues. Then my prophecy from 1974 will be revealed to you when you see what I said to you. It will come to pass. I know it. So this part here is for the bride at large, and so may God send it out to them and open their understanding that the seven uh, the hidden mysteries, uh, the hidden mysteries is the word of God. Well, I'll get to it in here further. So, <clears throat> Brother Tim's message. Now, here's what I want to tell you, and we're gonna, I'm going to say a few words. I don't know how long I'm going to go. I, don't, I can't go but, uh, uh, too much longer. I'm very tired in my chest, and, but I do have to come in front of this tape here. Now, I told Tim, I said, Brother Tim, so you're like old man Riddle. I said, you just keep rolling along with all kind of mind-blowing messages. So I said, Brother Tim, I'll tell you what happened. I said, I have a message, the finishing of the seventh seal. Subject is connecting the bride's third phase uh, into Malachi for a third pull, the opening of the word. That's my subject. I've been waiting for months to preach this message. I never, I haven't been able to get to it yet, and today I'm, I'm here, but I, but I can't preach it. I gotta sit here. So I'm gonna take some of the inspiration of it and tie it in into uh, here this morning, because before I put on Tim's tape, I wanna, wanna make sure you get it. Amen. So now, <clears throat> and here's what the revelation is. I told Tim, I said, Tim, I am, I don't know how to explain it to you, but you don't know how you bless me because it has already happened last Sunday night. Your message, here it is in New York, Pennsylvania, his message hooks the bride's third phase into Malachi 4's third pull for the opening of the word. So we are here. So I'm telling to you now, because you cannot go beyond this day with any other understanding than what is being explained to you this morning by me and Brother Tim Smith's message. So friends, we are finally here for the finishing of the seventh seal. And now let's break down, I'm going to try to break down <clears throat> Malachi 4's message for you uh, from 1963 to 1965, his seven seal message. I'm going to take it a certain way to help you. Okay. Are, are you all right now? Wonderful. Okay. I am. Um... Yes. Oh, 
Joe's still there. I had another quote to have with me. Okay. Expectation and leading. Long Beach, California, 1961. Now, a minister cannot bring a revival. You heard me say this over and over and over. There's no preacher can bring a revival. He doesn't pack it with him. And the only thing he can do is just be loyal to God and his word. And the revival has to come by the people. The revival has to come by who? The people. Thank you. It cannot come by you Wednesday night if you're not here. I mean to dig it as your pastor. So don't look for a revival. If you cannot come here Wednesday night and come in here Sunday morning for a revival, you'll get nothing because God is not going to give it to you because you should have been here Wednesday night. So I have to tell you, church, you're lazy. Those who won't come in here and can come here. I'm not talking about the out-of-town people and others. So, <clears throat> and revival has to come by the people in your home, in your life. Now, revival isn't adding new members to the church, like Sunday morning. It's reviving that what we've already got. And that's why you need a seven thunder revelation to revive what you already have for the past 30, 40, 50 years. That's what the revelation will do. It'll put you on fire, you'll go into orbit, you begin to pray, and things will begin to happen in your church, in your family, in your surroundings, in your fellowships, whatever. Revive means to bring back what Malachi for already told you. To bring it back. Okay now. Okay now. We'll we break it down. I, I don't have the. I thought I had the guide with me. But the guide was. Um, October 14th. The night of the statue of a perfect man. And that's where I got the inspiration for. The finishing of the seventh seal. But I have it here again. On influence. Now, after Brother Branham, he knew he had to bring the seven, uh, he, had to, uh, he had to have a meeting, a, 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 mix, a week's meeting, to bring the seven seals. And then, of course, the seven angels appeared to him, and that threw him into action. Now, he goes out to uh, Arizona, and he goes to Phoenix for some long meetings there all through January. And here's on influence, January 12th, 63. Now he's waiting for these angels to meet him out there. What we've seen happen should put every soul in action. It should make a church that would make a revival here in Phoenix. That's why God put you here in New York City. It's something about New York. You're supposed to do it. Now look at you not doing it. Uh, that people would be flying in from Europe to see what taking place. They'd say there's a place in Arizona called the Maricopa Valley, city called Phoenix. There's something broke out there until the seven thunders of Revelation 10 that's not even wrote in the Bible is being manifested. Now watch. The power of God, the end time is here. Now notice this here now. The angel has gathered up the loose ends. And we're here. You got it? So he knows that he's going to gather those loose ends up with six seals. He already seen the seven angels. So he knows what he's going to, this is himself prophesying what he's going to do. That's why I prophesy what I'm going to do. And you better start prophesying what you're going to do. Or you do nothing. So you got that now? He knew that this last message would have two parts to it. It would have the written seals, the loose ends tied up in six days. 
Then they have another part, which, when, which would be Revelation 10. And, they, and Christ would come down. Now, Revelation, <clears throat> the six seals, uh, the six seals to gather up the loose ends, that I read Revelation 3, 14 through 22. That is the seventh angel to the Laodicean church age. That is Elijah. And all what he was supposed to do, he was supposed to uh, gather up all the loose ends. And that was his ministry. And I have, I have, to, I have a quote here on it. And um, then he was to introduce Messiah. So he, he has two parts to it here. So, okay, friends, and we are here. He was about to write those thunders. He said, don't write them, seal them up. And at that day of the sounding watch of this last seventh angel, seventh church age, as I read it to you, the Laodicean church age, the mystery of God, all about God, how that God's not a big bunch of gods, but one God, and all these other things should be finished in that time. In this time here, where this angel of the seventh age would begin to sound, and everything should be finished. The great battles back before has got the loose ends hanging out. Now, what's that mean? It means that uh, Arrhenius and Martin and Columba was not prophets. They were a special messengers, the church age messengers, and, uh, and certainly Luther and Wesley was not prophets. So there was a lot of loose ends hanging down through the seven church ages that these men never could get to because they were not prophets. And that left a lot of loose ends. You got it now? Praise God. It left these loose ends hanging out. He said, it ought to be all wrapped up together in these last days. A prophet, in other words, got to come along and catch these loose ends, these mysteries, and they would come to him as the word of God. And this prophet would send the word of God out. And that would gather everything up into one revelation of Jesus Christ. And the mystery of God would be finished. And then we talk about the a rapture and all these things in the resurrection. Then when that sounds, here it is right here. When it, he begins to sound in March 18th, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, when he begins to sound, 24, he opened the seal up, tied in the tent vision, and took the thunders out of Revelation 10 and put it on Revelation 8, 1. You got it? Okay, it ought to be all wrapped up together in this last days, said. Then, when that sounds, when he begins to sound in March 63, an angel comes down from Revelation 10 and said, Time shall be no more. Now, back then, Daniel 12, seal up the book, Daniel, until uh, the time of the end. And many shall run to and fro, and all kind of things will go on. So all these things that was been declared to the prophets down through the ages, they have to be held back until the time of the end. But when this angel sounds, that is the time of the end. And there should be no more delay. Time no longer for all of these things that God spoke about to be made known to that predestinated bride. I wish I could preach. I wish I could preach in that pulpit. <laughs> it's a very hard sitting doing this here. I'm tired. Are you getting understanding, church? Because I'm doing this for you. Amen. Time, now you understand by time shall be no more. Time will not be delayed when all of these mysteries will come out because God wants his bride. Amen? The world is finished. 
is over with. Okay. The harvest is here. Time should be no more. Oh, we are here, brother, sister. We at the time. Let's let the Holy Spirit influence us to the Word of God. Let's let God do the influencing in our hearts and not be influenced by others. This ought to put us in action. There you are. Put you in action when? Wednesday night. In action. Not all sloughing around here somewhere. Let's let God do the influencing. Put us in action with reverence, humility, the pillar of fire vindicated among us again. Like it was bringing the children of Israel, signs of his coming is at hand. Oh my, the word. By the word being fulfilled, we see the promise. In the last days, he'll pour out his spirit. So there we are, church. And now, I can skip some of this here. I'm trying to cut it here. But you could, because uh, uh, take this down, you can jot this down. First seal, page 144, uh, is like a prelude to the ministry of, of the angel of Revelation, uh, of uh, Revelation 10, 7. Okay, well, let me see. Now we find out that, we find out and have through the, through the church ages, according to the scripture, that we promise the return of that spirit just before the end time. He's talking about Elijah. Is that true now? He knows the nature of it. Now he will not start another church like Luther Wesley. He goes on. It pleased God to use that spirit. Okay, I'm just kind of skipping here. Uh, now notice what he did. He's not going to start a denomination. Friends, he's not going to come at the end of Laodicea and start something else because there's no more time. It's, it's the last church age. The only thing he can do is pull you and I out of Laodicea and put us in the revealed age as Brother Tim will bring out. And you'll find out where you are right now. Because the Laodicean church age is the last age. And the messenger of the seventh age, of the seventh angel, which is the seventh messenger to the seventh church age, is the fellow that's going to reveal by the Holy Spirit all these mysterious things. How many was here last night? Okay. See, the tenth chapter. But in the last days, it'll have to be a prophet to take up the mysteries of God because the others cannot do it. A minister, they cannot do that. Bring it back. Because the mysteries was only known by the prophets. And I, think, because I believe, uh, because Ephesians 3 says, holy apostles and prophets. You catch what I said? Okay. Because the mysteries was only known by the prophets. So it has to be this fellow come. See what I mean now? He can't be a reformer. He's got to be a prophet. Because it's got to be somebody that's gifted and set there that catches the word. Okay. Now, so Revelation 3, 14 through 22 uh, was Malachi for William Branham, Elijah, seventh church age messenger. Now, Revelation 10, I'm going to get into it now. That's Jesus Christ. Understand it now? That's son of man. Okay, we're going to break it down for you. Uh, the seven seal book. First seal, page 146. The Pentecostals brought in the message of the Holy Ghost and so forth. But in the last days, in this last age, the messenger is not <clears throat> to start any re reformation, but to take all the mysteries that the reformers left off and gather them together and solve them to the people. Let's just read it again. Sounds good to me. I like to read it. I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, a rainbow, upon his head, and his face was the sun, his feet, pillars of fire. Now we saw the same thing, which was Christ. And we know Christ is always the messenger to the church. All right. He's called a pillar of fire, the angel of the covenant, and so forth. He had in his hand a little book open. The book is open here. In Revelation 5, it was closed. Now the, the seals, watch, 
Revelation 10, the seals had done been broke here. This is after March 18th through the 24th. You got it? Had done been broke here. We are breaking them now. But this thing, this thing is open. It says, right foot on the sea, is left on the earth, cried loud voice when the lion roared, and cried seven thunders uttered their voices. My, the complete, when the seven thunders uttered their voices, I, John was about to write, write what? What they said. I heard a voice from heaven, God, saying unto me, seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered, and write them not. Don't write them. And the angel which I saw stand upon the sea lifted up his hands to heaven and swore by him that lives forever and ever who created the heavens and there and the earth and things in there and the sea and things which are therein. Now here it is again, that there should be time no longer. To, in other words, no more delay in bringing out these mysteries of God. You got it now? No more delay. Watch, don't forget this now as we go. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, that, he said in himself here, that last angel, earthly angel, so he tells you who it is. This angel come down from heaven, Christ, wasn't him. He come from heaven. He talking about verse seven here. But he's speaking here the voice of the seventh angel, which is an angel means a messenger. Anybody knows that? And the messenger to the church age. So we got Christ, his ministry in Revelation 10. He gets down to the sixth verse and he says, no time no longer, no more delay. Because over in Daniel 12, the book, he said, hold it up, and, you know, to and fro until the time of the end. This is the time of the end, so he's identifying it. That's why Brother Bram was so excited on Sir, is this the time? He knew it was the end of the world. And here, what are we doing? Do we know it? Do we live like it? Do we act like it? Huh? Or do we think we're going to stay here for a long time? He gets down to the sixth verse. And now, where can he go now? He cannot use another body on the earth because he's son of man. So he's got to have a prophet to veil himself in. You got me now? So you got to take this seventh age prophet from Revelation 3, 14 through 22, and he would begin to sound in March 18th through the 24th. He's got to use him. So he brings him over to verse 7. In the days of the voice of the seventh angel, there he is, when he shall begin to sound the mysteries, seven seals, all the mysteries of God should be finished. As he has declared to his servants, the prophets. And you'll find in his message, all down through the ages, Isaiah all back through there, there was many hidden mysteries that this seventh angel is going to bring out between uh, June 14, 1964, and December 1965. That will be his message. And I'm going to show you this morning. The entire mystery is unfolded. Now God, Jesus, is going to use William Bram's body and veil himself in the Son of Man, as Son of Man. That's the ministry of that angel. See, be so simple, people just drop off the top of it. Yet it'll be perfectly vindicated everywhere just be perfectly normal. Everybody that wants to see it can see. That's right. Jesus said, as he said, when he come, you got eyes and can't see. Isaiah said you did. You got ears, you can't hear. So there you are. Now, the second seal, page 179. Brother Brown speaking, I'm not Brother Brown, but uh, he, he, he's speaking about uh, election. I'm not positive, he said, Brother Bill, I'm not positive, but I believe that Polycarp was a student of St. John. That's correct, he was. I think Irenaeus was a student of Polycarp.
That's, that's correct. Irina said, Jesus will return, watch, when the last elected member of the body of Christ comes in. Now comes in where? Comes in a message? No, 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 no. Comes into Christ and is baptized in there with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. When the last one comes in there, you see, uh, uh, that was Irenaeus about 400 years after the, the death of Christ. He said, when this last age comes in, now that's in the pre-Nicaea Council, you fellas here that read, study the scripture and study, I mean study the history of the Bible, in the pre-Nicaea Council, I think it's the first book or the second book, you'll find it. Now he saw it years ago that he said at the last spot, last one elected, that elected, People think the election is something that's just been, been something hatched up here lately. My, that's one of the oldest teachings that we have, election and calling. And so Irenaeus, certainly a real student of the scripture, always believed in election. And so Irenaeus was one of the angels of the church age, as we've seen, as we studied, we believe. Of course now, watch, they were all mysteries. You got it? Seven voices, seven mysteries, seven men of the seven church ages. Are you getting it? They were all hid right here in these seals. You got it? You see, and they are to be revealed in the last day. How they start off with Paul and Arrhenius and Martin and so forth and so forth would be Columba and Luther and Wesley and has come down on down to the last age and that would be Malachi 4. They were all mysteries. But if you read the Bible, the book of Revelation back there, Nobody would know who in the world Irenaeus and Polycarp and Malachi for was. They were mysteries. Well, praise God. Do you understand anything now? Are you understanding? Okay. Okay, on one in a million, a little radio broadcast, 1965, he said, the vision is not your end time, talking about the, the angels coming. It's for your ministry. The sword is the word. The seven seals will be open, the mysteries. And then two weeks after that, or two months, rather, after that, I was up in the mountain with a bunch of friends when it happened. Seven angels, just as clear as you're standing here, came sweeping down from heaven. The rocks in the mountains rolled out the hills, and people standing there were screaming and going on, you know, dust flying everywhere. And when it was, he said, return to your home. Now will be. Each angel will be one of the seals of the seven seals. Well, each angel took a seal of the, now we're talking about the seven seals on the backside, friends. There's seven written in the Bible. But under the seventh written seal there, Revelation 8 1, these seven seals here is connected under there. Because I asked Billy Paul one time in 75, I said, Billy, are there seven seals or 14? I said, well, I said, I'm not going to ask you to answer it. I'll answer it. I said, there's seven written in the Bible, and there's seven on the backside. And your father took the seven on the backside from Revelation 10 and put it under Revelation 8.1. That makes it seven seals. Amen? Okay. So now you got it. Now each angel, and each angel came Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Then the seventh angel with the swept back wings, that was who? Jesus Christ. Is that right? And these angels represented Paul, Arrhenius, Martin, Columba, Luther, Wesley, and so forth. You got it? And Jesus Christ veil himself, Revelation 10, 7, 
into Malachi 4. Okay. I want you to have the understanding. Okay, let me hurry. Now, um, March 24th. Now, watch. Now, let's study this here. From March 24th to September, when he preached a token, and I'm a, uh, I have a quote to explain what that was. Okay, so let's happen. So between there, he preached messages. Here's one of them here, uh, July 24, warning then judgment. Page 29, so you know what's going on. Oh God, let us check up tonight. Granted, knowing that these great things are only warning us of the soon rapture in church. And if we laid with sin, with unbelief, with slothfulness, we shall not make that rapture. We know it, Lord. So we pray that you will burn into us the Holy Ghost. Down into our hearts, oh God, set our souls on fire with your blessing. Help us to understand. Now bless the people together. Bless our precious pastor and his wife. Bless the deacons, the trustees, all the laity together. Forgive our sins. Heal our sicknesses, Lord, and set our hearts aflame. And may we go from this place with a warning message as we meet the people in sin and tell them, friend, aren't you shameful that you do such things, knowing that you have to meet God someday? Grant, Lord, I commit them to you. Now I commit the message and all together to work together for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Don't you love him? Think of what we are. Look how, f now, hey, now watch this church. Look how far up the road we are, friend. Just look back down the road from way down yon in the days of Luther Wesley on down through the ages. Look here where we are at. He's telling you where you're at. Right here at the top of the pyramid. Right here where God has proved it. How do you prove it? Seven seals. That the Bible through the seven seals has perfectly been revealed. That means that the seventh seal is open. And not what they're saying today in the message is closed. It's right here. It says it's open. Now watch. Seven seals are open. This is July 1963. Waiting only now, waiting for them seven mysteries right at last on the coming of the Lord. Now, these mysteries must come on the coming of the Lord. Now, they got to come somewhere in the shout, voice, or trump. Some people got them coming in the trump in a tent ministry. Well, I don't believe that. <laughs> I believe they came with the shout. Amen. On the coming of the Lord and the rapture of the church that might happen before morning. Okay. The next one I'll pick out. You can check through there. Uh, Christ the mystery of God revealed. Many in there. Flashing red light. I'm, I'm, I'm going to read what that means. Uh, okay. So then on the token, September. And on that night after the token, here's what I want to show you here. Page 6. Now this morning, meaning the token, I told you being not with you, I think we had another two or three hour message this morning. I just got started, and I thought I'd just carry it over tonight. But it was too tremendous. I don't know whether the people got it or not. I hope they do everywhere. I hope that there were some good tapes on it so it can be carried out to be known that I believe of all the message that I ever brought, that absolutely was ordained of God. Outside, of course, the regular commission, like the seven seals, that was a commission. That was directly the word of God. I'm talking about a message to preach. It means inspiration. I believe that one was it, the token. The one, now, here, now watch now. The one that's needed to follow those seven seals. So there you are. So between the seals through the summer and uh, September here, he's telling you what happened through the summer. Now watch what's come after the seven seals. 
Now, this is during the summer. The uniting of the people, united sign. The red light flashing in the last days. The sign of women getting prettier. And men, what they would do. All the signs of the Holy Spirit leading up. And then watch, come right back here to the capping off of all those messages since the seven seals. Now, all of the messages preached from March 24th up to September, the token, is it's capped off in this one thing, the token that we are all right. Just check ourselves and see if we're in the faith. So now, what are you getting out of this church? Are you getting out of this that you have to have the token? That you have to be desperate for the token? Is the seal is capped off by the token. The life, because the seals brings the fullness of the atonement. And the atonement is the blood in seven parts of the seven church ages. Now, what is your part? Brotherly kindness and what else? Forgiveness. That is correct? Can we say amen? Well, then what are you supposed to put on the lintel and the doorpost? Brotherly kindness, forgiveness. All right. For the token. Okay. So now you switch it over. Now, now, now you understand the period between March 24 and the token? is capping off all of these messages, flashing red light, uniting of the people, all these things. You, you, can, you can go back and start hearing the tapes yourself, you see. Paragraph 32. Now God the creator... Let me hurry here. I don't want to spend much time. We can make a set of loans. I truly be, are we on the verge of one of the mightiest things that ever struck the earth since the, since the days? It'll be so humble. Yeah, he's talking about his third pool. See, what man calls mighty, God calls abomination. But what man calls foolish, God calls mighty. See? But now watch it. It'll be so humble that you'll never you, that you'll miss it if you've not got the token there to examine it. See why you have all these uh, interpretations today? There's no token to examine what the prophet preached. Because the token caps off what he preached, seven seals and so forth. And they don't have it. Now, church, you will understand me here. Page 14. Jack Moore said to me one time, I'd hate to have to answer like you will have to you will have to at the day of judgment. God has put these people into your hands, and you're going to have to give an account for every one of them. You're going to have to answer for your ministry. That's been about 15 years ago, or maybe 18, and since then, I've been in desperation. What will I do? Let me say only what you say. Lord, let me tell them what's the truth, or don't say nothing. It throws me into desperation. Now, what do you think I'm in? Coming behind the prophet, everybody cursing me and everything else, and here I am, let me only say what he said. Is this right? This is what I've been under, and I've been under desperation to only say what that prophet said. Thank you. So when, if the prophet had to be under this, that he'd only say what God tell him. I had to be under it. What do you think you're going to be under? When you ever get desperate. Okay? So you see what you're coming into, right? Then seeing these signs coming, seeing the Holy Spirit take us out there, bring these seals, lay them in like that, bring the church ages, lay them in, then come down to the great pillar of fire and reveal himself. Then come down the next thing, the seven seals, and reveal it. Even put it in the papers, the magazines, talking about Life magazine. Then come in and take the angels of God, them seven angels with seven messages, and con confirm exactly what the Bible said. And during that time, come up and bring in those seals, those signs, flashes of the end time and bring it up to the people and tell them what it is. All the signs and things going on, see? And all about, all about, excuse me, 
the Lord working right here, showing himself present. And then right down like this morning, come up and require that token on every person. Then you're my people. You're the ones that I love, these and them, listen to the tapes and so forth. Then you'll see what desperation it puts me in. you see what desperation I'm in, the Pennsylvania, New York, and people across the world, you know, because they believe me, because I'd be a righteous man. Now, desperation, signs of his coming, sh should throw these signs that he just spoke about, that capped off the seven seals through the summer, should uh, sh throw every member of Christ into desperation now. When were, when were they supposed to be in desperation? September 1963. About our souls, about our welfare for hereafter. Well, what are we going to do, uh, are we going to amount to if we gain the whole world? What are we living for? What do you work for? What are you eating for? What are you struggling for to live? What are you living for to die? And you're not fit to live until you're fit to die. For me to die is Christ. For me to gain is Christ. For me to live is Christ. Okay, now, you cannot be desperate until God speaks to you. He had to speak to me, seven thunder, seven voice, seven churches. That, that made me desperate. I've been desperate ever since, friends. And I believe today he will speak to you. Before the day is out, if you are sincere and you really want God to speak to you, when you sit there in your seat and you pray, Lord, uh, please speak to me with at Brother Coleman speaking and also Tim Smith's tape. And don't let me leave here without you speaking to me so I can be desperate. Amen. Amen, Reuben. You cannot be desperate until God speaks to you. Page 23. You can't be desperate until God speaks to you. Oh, church, rise and shake yourself. Pinch your conscience. Wake yourself up in this hour. We must be desperate or perish. There's coming forth something from the Lord. And he's talking about the thunders and so forth. I know it as thus saith the Lord. It's coming forth something, and we better get desperate. Between life and death, it'll pass through us, and we won't see it. And it did pass through the message, and they did not see it. And they asked me for it to come back in the resurrection. Okay, the next one, that he post, he's posting the church, was souls in prison. Uh, November, uh, November 10th. Brother Bram posts the church. He posts the church to the hour, and the hour was souls in prison has to be preached to that cannot be saved. So I won't go into it now, but later on I want to preach about it. I, I've done it before. And also, the bride has to preach to him. Also, Brother Bram preached to him. Jesus preached to him. And the bride, this quotes, uh, will linger a while preaching to souls in prison. I ain't going to say no more about it, but I did have an experience myself up in Glen Cove uh, a Rehabilitation Center. Uh, September 15th, I was in direct hallucinations for th three days in the way I was at. And uh, the family came up, and when uh, Joanne and Becky took me, uh, went with me up there, uh, from the hospital, and uh, and I entered into the hospital and got situated, and they stayed with me to about Joanna Becky eight eight thirty. When they went out that door, I had a roommate there, a fellow named Stanley. When Joanna Becky walked out of that door, I'm sitting on the bed, the floor opened up, and I looked down in there. There was a whole vast area down there, of uh, people in prison, and I went down in there. So, friends, I'll talk about it later. It's true. Okay, now, souls in prison. Then the next posting at, to me that's very important here, what shall I do with Jesus called the Christ? November 24th. Hear what he said on page 43. This book is already open. That's right. 
just waiting for, here it is, the seventh seal. Now, mind you, the seventh seal is already, the, the tent vision is already connected into it. The thunders is already under the seventh seal. Here he's saying now, he's prophesying, this book's already open. That's right. Just waiting for the seventh seal with the tent vision and the thunders to be identified with the coming of Christ. And the Lord does all three. Shout, voice, and trump. So somewhere in there, he's going to strike there. And Brother Bram prophesied it here. The next important one to me was look away to Jesus, which I think was December. And there he speaks about the third pull, the world council of churches, when the press comes down, the five manifestations. He said, but we can't go, we have to wait, we have to wait for this to come up to here. We can't go no further. And that was in December 63. He posted the church. Already told you in September you should be desperate. Then he did the church order on December 26. Then he went out. Well, pretty good. Almost finished. You got time? Okay. All right. Let's be the truth. Here we go. Okay. <clears throat> oh, here we are here. Okay. Souls in prison. Jesus on your hands. Look away to Jesus. From January to April 1964, he went across from California all the way back through there. Stopped in uh, March there and uh, went hunting. Threw up the rock. You all know the story, right? And said, judgment striking West Coast. Alaska earthquake in March almost sunk Alaska. And then he went back down south to continue his meetings. On, on two or three tapes, at least two, this, this is what he said. He said, what was the Alaska earthquake the other day? Jesus Christ officially turned down. Now between January and April, what was he doing? In March, he was uh, asking the, the, the Pentecostal people, where he went, who do you want, Jesus or Barabbas? And they took Barabbas. So when they took Barabbas, the nomination, well, then Alaskan earthquake, it was finished. And he officially turned down. He began to preach trial, Tampa, different places. And he finally wound up preaching trial April 27th, I believe, in Tucson. And friends, that was the finish. To my recollection, to my knowledge, Billy Paul only sent out three notices for meetings. One, the seven seals. Two, the unveiling of God. Three, marriage and divorce. So Billy Paul sent out the notice, unveiling of God, June 14, 1964. To me, this was the start of the seven thunders. This was the start of the hidden mysteries. Because he said the book was open the previous year, in November. The book was open, just waiting for the seventh seal to be identified to the coming of the Lord. So here we are. And it's something I wanted to say here. I have to bypass it. Okay, now here's the unveiling of God. Brother Tim brings all this out so I can kind of skip around here now. And I have to bypass because it's late. And I don't want to go too far. But Brother Tim brings this out. Talking about the word. He says, now that word, the word was brought forth. Then it was written out, then it was put behind and still veiled. For God was always in that word. Let me stop here. You have the season from March 24th to uh, the token, then posting you to souls in prison. Huh? And the uh, seven seal to be identified. And then uh, look away to Jesus. Then the next part of it is going out to the Pentecostals. Ask if you want Jesus or Barabbas. And then throw up the rock. Judgment strike on the West Coast. And then uh, Jesus Christ officially turned down. You got it now? Well, then you understand then that it was turned down. And now it was time for the Lord to come forth. You understand that? Thank you. So now it's finished with. It's over. And now will come 
the tent vision in uh, spiritually speaking. Why? Because every seal had uh, a, a vision in there. Like the white horse rider, the red horse rider, they had something there. But the, set, but, the set, but the seventh seal didn't have no vision because God gave it to Brother Branham in 1955. That was the vision. You see? And, uh, okay, he's always a word. He's a word always. He was in that word. That's the reason that the word had to be veiled. Oh, brother, sister, are you catching it? Look, don't you see? It's been veiled through these uh, ages according to what God said, and it will be open in the last days. Here it is. Those seven seals would be broke, and the full thing would come into view of the people. What took place all along? The hour of the seventh angel's message, all the mysteries of God should be made known in that Elijah, son of man, in him, okay, in his last hour, how that Christ is put out of his church as son of God, how he's revealed as son of man again, how that the church, that's us now, is to be put in order and everything for the last day, no creed, no denomination, just absolutely the word living in an individual. I'll take one, leave one. I'll take this one, leave that one. There's no strings, no denomination, no bindings, no nothing. It's the heart with God and him alone. Okay. Okay. That, to me, was the beginning of the opening of the mysteries. Now, let's prove it. And the next message was the Feast of the Trumpets, and that was July 19th, and now, uh, page 10. Now, remember, God is the word, and each age, he has allotted the word for each age, and that would be on the earth. He's allotted in the church age. The seven seals reveal every bit of it. See, and uh, now, why was there mysteries that were still hid? Now, here we go. The Lord showed me this years ago. Revelation 10, we find at the end of the seventh angel's message. See, there now, the end. What was the beginning? The seven seals in Jeffersonville. What was the end? Son of man coming down with seven thunders. You got it now? At the end, at the end of the seventh angel's message, that these mysteries that had been hid would be revealed. Revelation 10, 1 through 7. Notice the reason is because there had been no prophets during the age. The Bible said that God does nothing until he reveals his prophets, his servant, the prophet. And the word of the Lord in all ages has always come to the prophets, never to a system, never to a group. Page 12, and now through the church ages, they had done the same, and the church in the seven seals is to reveal all the mysteries that was left off. See, left off, because we were not prophets. There was no prophet, Luther, Wesley, back through there. So they had to leave all it off. But then the Malachi for to come and bring it up and solve it out. Here we are, church. Now upon the basis, now page 13. Now upon, this is what is on Anointing Commission Beaumont. I dropped it on there. Now upon that basis, we come to the Feast of the Trumpets. The hidden mysteries. It's prophesied it was to be that way. Therefore, it had to be revealed in the way that it was. But it had to be revealed in this last day to fulfill exactly what I just said. Malachi 4, 4th chapter, St. Luke 17, 30, 30th verse how he would do it. See, by the third, by same little 17, 30, it's how he would do it. And Hebrews 13, 8, Hebrews 4, 12, and many of those scriptures that tells us. Now, we talk about Brother Branham, page 19 and 20. So now someone said, well, that's seven seals, Brother Branham. That'll be, that'll be revealed in the last days, some great mystery how we get closer to God. No, sir, can't be. See, now, friends, I have to say something here. I don't mean to hurt anybody's feelings, but I was told by a pastor from Tucson in 1968, 69, he said, Brother Joe, he said, all of my dirty, nasty sins will be taken care of in the 30, 40-day resurrection period in the tent when Brother Branham reappears to preach the seven thunders. Do you understand why I don't go for that? I said, well, brother, 
all of my dirty and nasty sins are, are taken care of now through the blood of Jesus Christ. So knowing this, this brother, because Brother Musgrove made a statement about the thunders, what's going on in New York. This brother went in the pulpit and said, I don't know what's wrong with these seven thunder churches. Don't they know that the 30, 40 day period that the prophet is to come back and take care and preach the thunders and take care of all these things. This is the same brother that told me his dirty, nasty sins. Now you think I'm supposed to believe him? <laughs> no way. Because the fullness of the atonement came with the thunders. Amen. And took away all of my sins. I never sinned in the first place, Brother Branham said, on Invisible Union of the Bride. Amen. I just thought I dropped it off to you. Oh, here we are. So, okay, it's right now, see? That'll be revealed in the last day, some great mystery, how we get closer to God. In other words, Brother Bram, you're going to come in the resurrection and, and bring a great mystery, how all of our sins we caked up with will be gone. No, sir, it can't be. Whosoever shall take one word from the Bible or add one word to it, his part shall be taken out of the book of life. What it is, is a revelation on what has been missed back there. It's already wrote here. It's in here. It's to reveal what's already been written. Because you can't add one thing to it, take one word from it, and the seven thunders reveal the hidden mysteries that's already written. There is your thunders. There is your hidden mystery. For instance, take marriage and divorce. Brother Bram got the revelation of it, and God took him straight to 1 Corinthians verse, uh, chapter 7, verse 12 through 15. And that's, he used a hidden, written word to set the people free in marriage and divorce. That is the hidden mystery. I hope you got it. Okay. Now, Brother Tim spoke this here, and I want to back up what he said with a quote here about the Son of Man. You hear it. I'm almost finished here. Okay. Uh, page 52, approving this word, uh, Jeffersonville. Uh, you believe we're living in the last days when the Son of Man would be manifested. That would be all the word that's gathered up through Luther, Wesley, Baptist, and all that, and the Pentecostals. Now, watch all gathered up to the revelation of what has all been. Now, here it is right here. The seventh angel was to open the sixth seal mystery. That's all. Right here. It's all gathered up in the Son of Man. So he comes down to Revelation 10 and gathers up all the other into him. His fullness of time has come to the fullness of the word to manifest the fullness of his body. That's the word. That's the spoken word, which is the Bible. Here's the spoken word. Now, here's the spoken word. And in there, written mystery has already been uh, revealed already. Six seals. Now he's going to come for the hidden mysteries. Okay? And it's in the spoken word. So he reveals the hidden mysteries from unveiling of God June 14, 1964, all the way through to the rapture tape, the whole thing, 1965. You got it? Well, there you are. It's come to the fullness of his body, the fullness of his word. Oh, that's a spoken word. Now made manifest by the word. This Bible, hidden mysteries and all. Verse 7 had to be the voice of the, seven, of the seventh angel. So the son of man had to come in the prophet, the word, and take this Bible and open it up, the hidden things in the Bible. Okay? So it says right here, that's the spoken word made manifest by the word, veiled in the prophet, reveal the word. You got it? So we are feasting on the hidden, written, revealed word by Malachi 4, the Son of Man being revealed. And the revealed word, you go right into the slot up there, and Brother Tim 
will take you further on into the revealed word age and so forth and so on. Well, how do you feel, church? Amen. Amen. Mine's blown out. Okay, I'm finished now. So I believe that the unveiling of God was the start of revealing of the hidden mysteries. Now watch. The hidden mysteries is the bride's hidden message. A spoken word message. Number two, it is the bride's wedding garment. You got it? You mean you, you got to put on the word? Yeah. Well, then you have to ask for it, don't you? Okay, so you're hidden. So your wedding garment is hidden mysteries. Three, the hidden mysteries revealed as the word message to the bride. When it was revealed, she wakes up, seventh under revival. She goes to the angel, give me that book. Well, it's in the ministry there. Well, I don't care. I believe in ministers. The others don't believe in ministers, but I do. Give me the book. Is that your church? She begins to make a church that will make a revival for part B, third phase. She's filtered out of part A now. She's getting all the dirt off her, all the sloveness, slothfulness, no praise demons. Huh? Late devils that don't want to come before 10. Huh? Sloven uh, uh, spirits that, that don't want to come in on Wednesday night. Huh? She's getting rid of that now because today she's receiving a revelation. Amen? She's filtered out of part A by a revelation of the seven thunders. You don't have to ask her anymore, please come before 10 a.m. You don't have to ask her anymore, please come on Wednesday night. If she's able to do it, she does it automatically. She graduates shortly to part B, to become honed and beaten as gold, as a spoken word bride, to be lined up by the true North Star. The word on top of word on top of word. Do you see it? Until she becomes like him in his very image. Do you see it? You believe the hidden mysteries are revealed? You believe in the opening of the word? Well, then go to the angel in the fivefold ministry so you can become the spoken word bride. So now the hidden mysteries, unveiling of God, Feast of the Trumpets, what's the traction on the mountain, and I don't have time to, to get into that but I'll bring it up probably next time I come in the pulpit. And so, church, there's your seventh on the message of hidden mysteries being revealed to you to line up with the words of the Son of Man. God bless you. We'll now go to Brother Tim down in Pennsylvania. Okay, and also Brother Norman, you can start the tape right after, um, I believe Brother Bob does it because prayer requests or whatever, and this about uh, two choruses before because Brother Tim comes on. So church, pray for me. God bless you. Oh, there's one thing I want to say here. Now, this all, all of this is designed to bring you to the spoken word original seed. Okay, uh, volume one, page 27. All of God's sons must be the same. Yes, sir. To be born of the word, see what it is now? And spirit brings us back to the spoken word again, like St. John 3. To be born of the water and the spirit, what does it do? Then it brings you right back again into the place of where you should have been at the, at the beginning. That's the reason of Christ's death brings us right back again to where? Sons of God. Page 42. All right. So believers of the word and spirit must be one. You get it? Believers, the Word and the Spirit are absolutely one. You don't do your own thinking. You don't use your own mind. Isn't that wonderful? The mind is in Christ is in you. The mind is in Christ is in you. 
will take the word just like he did because he was the word and the mind of Christ in you. You are the word. You're God's living word, representatives of him here on earth. That's right. Continuing the work. You are the continuation of the word. The, the uh, church should be that way. And when so, when you're that way, you will be that way. The Bible is manifested again like in the early days of the disciples, just like the disciples, the Bible is living again in you. God bless.